everyone. Today I wanted to show you how to make fabric twine out of scraps. Now for those of you that have followed me long enough, you know I don't like to let much go to waste and especially fabric. I am a fabric hound. I really love my fabric and really there's there's nothing that goes to waste. I'll show you what I mean. I keep a, a box for any kind of scraps that I have. You know when you're cutting things and you've got little bits and pieces, I'll scrape them down and I'll throw them in the box and you end up with stuff like like this. You know, this fuzzy weird stuff. I use that. Now that's not going to be what I'm showing you today, but also in this box I keep the bigger pieces. Longer, longer bits like this, okay? And um, I'm usually a person who will take a take a piece of fabric and depending on what I've done with it when I open it up it's not always nice and neat like this so I usually come in and I will cut a bit off the bottom so knowing that I need to even up a bit of fabric um, isn't too bad because I know that I'm not going to waste it and I'll show you what I'm going to do and how you can turn this into a really cool twine that you can use for wrapping a package or hair braids or just having a, a really cute big ball of twine hanging around because it's kind of pretty. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is show you from right here what I'm doing and then I'll get up closer so you can see, speed it up a bit and show you how to continue the process. It's very simple. Fabric scraps can be any lengths you want. Um, if we're talking about a fabric scrap really much shorter than something like this, you would probably want to use that for the other thing that I will show you down the road in your scraps. Don't get rid of them, just put them in your scrap box. Um, but on the whole, you're going to want longer pieces. And these are just bits that I cut off of the edge because they were, they were crooked and I wanted a straight edge for what the project I was starting. You're always going to be running two pieces of fabric at a time and again, no wider than one inch. So if you have larger scraps, cut them down to one inch or less. And the gist of it is that the top piece of fabric you're going to twist away from you three to four times I found is the amount you need, about an inch in length, but it's about three or four twists. Then pull that one back to you, which brings your second piece of fabric up to the top. And you're going to twist that one away from you, again, three to four twists pull it towards you, and this is what you're just going to keep doing. This is a great thing to do in front of the TV because I'm not a person who can sit still. I'm sort of an A-type, and so I need to keep busy. Uh, if I'm not busy with my hands, I'm busy with my head, <laughs> but, but it doesn't stop. This kind of stuff I think I have to thank my grandmother for. She, was, uh, she lived through the Depression, and I was fortunate enough to have my grandmother live in our house with us. So I learned so many things from her. Um, some sewing, gardening, all the things, car repair. That woman did everything. And living through the Depression, she certainly saved. Now, she never made a cool fabric twine ball, but um, she didn't let anything go to waste. And a lot of things she did would turn into uh, cool quilts or sometimes patches for my jeans or things like that. So that was really neat. So what I'm going to do is change the setup here so you can see up close what I'm doing. And you see how simple it is. You can just chat or watch a show or sit out by the pool and watch people. I'm not a big sun person, so I'd be in the shade doing this. Um, and it's just a, kind of a, a fun activity to, to use up your scraps. So let's get a little closer look at what I'm doing. All right, so I hope this is a better view for you, but here are your two pieces of fabric and you're going to twist the top one away from you. You're going to pinch that one. You can leave the second fabric alone. Twist it two or three times and then pull it towards you. Then you take this next fabric and you twist it two or, well, actually three or four times away from you. The tighter you get it, the stronger your, your rope or twine will be and pull it towards you. Twist away. Pull towards you, twist away, pull towards you. You see, you can, you can get a little quicker if you kind of do that, but I wanted to keep it slow for you at first.
All right, now you can see my fabrics are different lengths. You want that. You want them to be different lengths because you're going to be continuing to attach until you're done fabrics to the pieces, not at the same time. Otherwise you have a big lump and it wouldn't look good as you're going along on in your twine. You have attachment points, which for me on here is this right here is an attachment point because you're only attaching to one strand for a bit and then you come onto the other one, it's a skinnier mesh and you really don't even notice where your attachment point is. So now I'm gonna grab another one of my uh, pieces of material and you can see that just sits because it's just so tight. And I'm gonna attach it to the, the brown piece here. And then we just do our, oops, I guess I should get it closer. <laughs> One, two, three, forward, then my pink piece, the three, forward. So you can see why you don't want to do both pieces at the same time, because it could get really, really bulky. That's forward. Now I started that one a little bit early just because I was trying to show you what I was doing, but, but that's fine. So I'm gonna twist this again. And now here we are. So at about two inches, like I said, I started the other one a little early. At about two inches, you wanna grab your next piece of material. Pop it underneath. underneath and twist your attachment the same three twists pull it forward and you're off to the races again with a couple of real long pieces to go this kind of thing to me is relaxing I imagine some people would probably drive them nuts uh, <laughs> but not me. I, I adore knowing that I'm taking something that would have otherwise been thrown out and, and turning it into something fun and useful at the same time. I certainly have used these on Christmas presents, birthday gifts, um, like I said, hair tie backs. You just would cut from your ball here of twine and use it for whatever you want to use it for. You could wrap it around if you had those old spools, those old wooden spools that are kind of cool. Um, you could wrap it around that. I like to keep it in the ball. Uh, you could wrap it around a piece of cardboard if you're just going to use it for truly for decorating or uh, packages or whatnot. I mean, the uses are whatever you want to do with it. It's twine. It's literally twine. And um, when I'm probably gonna try to make the world's biggest ball of fabric twine. <laughs> Sorry for bouncing you. Um, because I just, I can't stop. <laughs> just, I can't stop. So that's how you would do the attachment. I'm gonna come back out and I'll show you uh, one more time kind of continuing on. And I think you've got this, it's, it's really simple. It really doesn't get any simpler than that. It's just twist backwards, pull forwards, twist backwards, pull forwards, you guys. It's super simple and really cute and a great way if you don't like to waste things like me and turn it into something that's actually usable and really pretty. And if you want to put a lot of thought into it, you can you can make them whatever colors you want. I just grab everything I've got and, and throw it on here because I, I do consider it a utilitarian thing for me and if I need a a piece of ribbon or a rope or something for what have you, I know I've got it here. Um, so that that's that's it. I finish mine off by clipping the end, but if you were to take a piece off, just get out your glue gun or um, I like Gorilla Glue or what have you and you, you clip it. You can tie a knot in it if you want to. You can glue it if you want to. Whatever length you need. Goodness knows there's plenty. 
So I'm, I'm looking forward to, as we're in the studio here, bringing you more things like this that I do that I feel are all part of being a homestead. Um, growing up with my grandma, her going through the depression, it really stuck with me. And I think that uh, sewing is an integral and important part to the homestead, which is why I started to learn years ago to bring that craft to help all of us, whether it's me crafting a pair of denim jeans or uh, ruffle aprons that I couldn't find a pattern that I liked, so I went ahead and made my own pattern. These will eventually be for sale in the shop. There's a lot of things that are coming down the road that I'll be making and putting for sale in the Five Dog Dot Farm store. Um, but I think sewing is a very important part to being a homestead um, value. Uh, even if it's putting a button on or learning how to put a zipper in a pair of pants, these are all things that uh, down the road may become very, very important. So I hope. I taught you a little something about how to make your own twine. If you sew like I do and you have fabric, don't let it go to waste. Thanks a lot for stopping by. If you like this video, smash that like button and definitely please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, this is Nikki D from Five Dog Farm and I'll talk to you soon.